Welcome to the Mini Moo Story. My name is Mira. Today's episode is about my diagnosis and I will try to explain to you how blind I really am. What can I actually see at this stage um, with my eyes? If you haven't watched my previous episode about how I discovered that something was wrong with my eyes and what I did afterwards, I recommend that you do that. So after having my eyes examined by different doctors, I uh, ended up at Kennedy Institute where they ran a lot of tests on my eyes. Um, it all ended out in they didn't have the final diagnosis, however, it was certain that I had a genetic disease um, in which I am losing my vision. I will end up being blind. So, after a period, um, they finally had my DNA tested for this certain eye disease and the results came back confirming that I have Bietis retinal crystalline dystrophy. Try to say that 10 times in a row. Bietis retinal crystalline dystrophy. Yeah. Bietis retinal crystalline dystrophy. Let's call it BCD just to make things a little bit easier. Um, it is, yes, a genetic eye disease. It is on your retina, which is the, the back part of the eye, and it is it's simply disappearing. Um, it's like my retina is a hundred or two hundred years old, and furthermore, it's characterized with some crystals, both on the retina and sometimes on the corneo, the front side of the eye. When I first realized uh, that something was wrong with my eyes, um, I hoped that I could go to a clinic and had a laser treatment of my corneo, but it wasn't the case. There's absolutely nothing I can do about this. I can just wait and hope that the process of my retina dissolving will slow enough. It also means that when the doctors told me I would be blind within five to 30 years, they couldn't actually tell how fast would this process go. If I put on my glasses, I can actually see 50% approximately, just staring straight ahead. I just had new glasses done um, with a clear frame so they do not interfere with um, whatever's left of my vision. So 50% is not that bad. It's all the other things going on. So one of the characteristics of BZD is tunnel vision. And I will try to show you what it is like in this exact moment. Today it's broad daylight and my eyes are well rested. They're not that tired yet. So if I put my hands up here, I see them on the camera, but I don't see them out here. So if I narrow it down, there, I can see my little fingers now move. So. This is what I see to the sides. I don't see anything out here. I see my hands here. It's the same up and down. So I see my hands on the camera, but I don't see them. That's the upper one and the lower one. Yeah. So right now, with good daylight and well-rested eyes, I still don't see very much um, because of my tunnel vision. Okay, um, if you don't see anything <laughs> going on down here and you have a toddler in daycare or kindergarten or in school and you're gonna pick him up 
at the end of the day. How many kids can you actually <laughs> step on on your way in getting your own son? A lot. So I don't know if if, <laughs> if they told move out of the way, Christian's blind mother, she's coming, and you just see all the little toddlers <laughs> getting up to the sides. So. I'm able to laugh at it now, uh, but five years ago it was oh, it, it made me nervous, um, and I'm still I'm stepping quite carefully. If I know either there will be stairs or I'm somewhere where things might lay, lay around or it's moving around down here. Another characteristic for a BCD is crystals inside whatever I'm seeing in my tunnel vision. So on each eye I have a ring of crystals which are blind spots. So I see something in here and then things that will disappear like those two rings as well. Um, it's quite frustrating because when I'm talking to someone and I, I'm trying to look them right in the eyes and the feel I'm looking them right into the eyes, uh, I will focus on one eye, then things will disappear and I will see the frame of the face and then the surroundings are blurred. So it's difficult to, to read your expression in the face. I will only see, oh, are you smiling with your eyes? And then I will listen to your voice instead. Furthermore, I have uh, lost more than half of my contrast vision. It means that I cannot see the depth, for instance, uh, steps. Um, it depends on where's the light, where's the sun, so I will instead, I will see the shadows. Um, <clears throat> it also means that I don't see facial uh, expressions or your wrinkles. I, I cannot tell if a person is 20 or 40 or... It's quite difficult. It also the reason why I don't recognize people. Um, because if you just, you know, a, f a, a smooth face with two eyes and nose and, and lips, it's, it's really difficult to rec recognize people. Um, I need to identify you by, by different characteristics. Uh, for instance, do you have big glasses, big beard, uh, curly hair? Are you moving in a special way? I will listen to your voice, so on. And my color perception has changed. Uh, I cannot see the difference between the dark colors, black, dark blue, dark green, dark gray, brown, all those. If I put them all together, I will tell you the darkest one is probably the black one. Same with the bright colors. Uh, white, bright yellow, big pink, beige, light grey, so on. I will tell you the brightest one is white, but I cannot tell the difference on the other ones unless I put them next to one another. And I'm standing like this, staring. And it could take me some minutes. Yeah. In the darkness, I'm blind. Like, blind. Um, my tunnel vision is narrowed really in here and I still have the crystals on each eye which are the blind spots and I don't see the contrast. So it's the shadows, I, I feel it moving but I don't know if it's a person or a tree or could be anything. Um, blind. That was my vision in daylight and in darkness, and in between there are a lot of different situations. 
Um, it depends on the light, the surroundings, how tired are my eyes, am I wearing glasses, am I not wearing glasses? Do I have to focus on other things? Um, I, if there's a lot of noise, um, my hearing is more sensitive now. So I will also get exhausted because I'm trying to dissolve which noises are important for me and which are not. Um, all those things taken in consideration, uh, yes, my vision is messed. When you add all these things up and everything taken into consideration and put a number on the paper, I have lost at least 90% of my vision. That was the result seven years ago when they started measuring my eyes and my vision. I haven't had um, an exam by the doctor for the past four years. Last one who examined my eyes was, was the optometrist who made my new glasses. And she said, without any glasses, I don't, I don't even see 10%. And that's without all the other things interfere, interfering with my vision. So I'm pretty blind, yeah. But I also think there's no need for those yearly measurements of, of my vision because there's no cure for BCD. And since I am mentally able to adjust and once in a while I buy some new glasses, um, that's the best I can do to go on. I used to be really good at recognizing people, remembering names and also remembering a lot of details about them. Um, but suddenly I lost some of my social skills because I don't recognize people anymore. And if I meet someone and, hi, how are you? It's been so long and I don't recognize you and you do not necessarily know that I'm almost blind by now and my brain will start working and I will think, okay, context, context, listen to your voice, look at whatever you're wearing, uh, characteristics and then it will yes then I, I get all the details and how are you and I will ask you polite the polite questions that we ask each other uh, on how how things are going in your life um, also that I don't recognize people I, I don't even recognize my own son or my own husband um, if I'm gonna meet my son somewhere and there will be other kids. I need to remember which kind of clothes he was wearing this morning and it cannot change. No changing, no taking off the shirt, no nothing. Same clothes, otherwise I won't recognize him. My husband, um, if we go somewhere and I turn around to look at something and I turn back I cannot, I cannot even see him. Um, sometimes I think he's hiding just to test me, but <laughs> it's also, I, yeah, sorry. I cannot even find my own kid and my own husband. Yeah. So, Beatis Retin, Beatis Retinal Crystalline Dystrophy, BCD. It is one of the most rare eye diseases in the world. Um, it's, it's most common in Asia uh, and it makes sense because my father, he is from Malaysia. That's why I'm tense, just been on holiday. Um, but unfortunately, there are not that many who has it, the active disease. Um, when I first discovered that I had BCD, I tried to read a lot of uh, medical uh, articles about, about it and the research that they had made, and it, there's not much to find um, besides the characteristics that I just described. I asked the doctors, uh, how is it possible for me to get BCD? 
uh, and it's an autosomal recessive disease which means that I got it both from my mother and my father. They had, they had both a good gene and a bad gene, so it leaves 25% risk for me to catch both the bad genes from my mother and my father and have active BCD. However, BCD is such a rare eye disease that I don't think my mother, she had it. I think I got it from my father since this is uh, a more common disease in Asia. And um, I think my mother, she had retinitis pigmentosa. It's uh, a related uh, eye disease, a little more common, but still a nasty one with some of the same characteristics. However, it's not confirmed. Uh, it's just my theory. My mother, she is uh, dead by now and it's, it's five years ago and she died a uh, longer time since I saw her and my father, I haven't seen, seen him since I was seven years old. So I have those questions um, that I cannot get an answer on, but it, it, it's, it's not relevant because anyway, I got BCD, so I gotta move on. Since BCD, it runs in my genes, uh, I have passed them on to my son. So he is a carrier of the bad BCD gene. However, he should not be at risk of uh, an active BCD eye disease, um, unless my husband, he has either BCD or maybe retinitis pigmentosa or, or whatever trigger there might be. We don't know that because no one knows about this disease. Um, but uh, of course I will have the talk with my son when he gets older that he should consider uh, who he has, he will, he will reproduce himself with. Um, do they have um, a related eye disease in her family? because then their children will be at risk of catching BCD or another eye disease. We don't know that. Or maybe they have treated everything by then. We don't know. We can only hope. How is this relatable? Few people, they can imagine what it is like to lose a vision. Um, I took my vision for granted and you probably do too. But I mean, if you're catching a life-threatening disease, you're probably taking your good health for granted. And suddenly you discover any kind of cancer or ALS or any of those diseases. It could be that you are feeling safe and healthy. And suddenly a traumatic things, thing is happening to you. So you end up with anxiety, PTSD, depression, and you don't feel safe anymore. Suddenly you're a nervous person. So your safety, your mental safety has been taken away from you, at least for a period. Um, it could be losing a near and dear relative or a near dear friend, uh, someone who has been in your, your life forever um, and you took them for granted, even though that everybody's gonna die. So, I mean, your grandfather, your, your grandmother, so on. But uh, it could even be someone younger than you. You were supposed to die first of age and suddenly there's someone in your family, a child, a child, my child, if he died before me, that would be more devastating than losing my vision. So I know it's, it's difficult to relate to the fact that I have lost nearly, um, nearly all my vision. But try to think about what is precious to you that you might even take for granted in your life. There's probably a few things. That's it for today. 
I hope you appreciated my explanation on what is actually going on with my eyes. I hope you have a little um, a better understanding for why I am not saying hi, not being arrogant. Um, I simply don't see you. And sometimes I do the opposite thing. I smile at someone that I don't know because I think I know you. And worst case, I smile at a stranger. I mean, it's good karma. It's the mini move. And remember, smile some more, appreciate what you got and stay motivated because otherwise life will be too tough. So remember to subscribe and I hope to see you again. Bye.